Hello and welcome intermediate students to another intermediate lesson at LearnPianoLive.com. Uh, this is an intermediate lesson, so the assumption is that uh, you can probably play a couple songs at least well enough to impress a couple friends. Uh, you might have some basic understanding of music theory or something, but uh, you really haven't had any formal training. So if that's you, you're in the right place. Uh, if you feel you know throughout this lesson like it's way 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 too advanced you might want to go back and check out yesterday's lesson it's in the archives uh, the beginners version of this lesson uh, that might answer a lot of your questions but feel free to ask away ask any questions this is about you and me so you got to ask questions so I know you know how to help you best and there's a couple other things I want to talk to you too about uh, before this countdown clock hits zero All right, first and most important, ask a lot of questions. The way that you're gonna do that is, uh, there's a couple different ways. You can jump in the chat room and uh, you know talk with the other students who are logged in at the same time. I'll be watching the chat room too. You ask your questions there. Or if it's a question that's just for me, a question about the lesson, especially if you know it's one that's gonna fit best at the question and answer time at the end, then uh, you can just put your name and your question in the box below this video, click submit, and uh, then I will get that. Now, if you're already in the archives, if you're watching this not live, but you're watching this in the archives, then uh, make sure at the end of the lesson you uh, click on the survey button you don't have to fill out the entire survey if you want to I mean I'd love your feedback but uh, really the best part of that is that you can put your question in there and then we click submit then I will get all of your questions I'll make sure that you get them answered whether you're in the archives or you're live Right next to this video, there should be a PDF button and an MP3 button. Now, you don't really need those till after the lesson because I'm going to be showing you on screen the PDF and showing you how to use it. And I'll play the MP3 during the uh, lesson too, so you know at, at the end of the lesson how you're going to use that. Some people, though, like to uh, print out the PDF ahead of time, so as I'm making notes on my version, they can make the same notes on their version. But it works either way. All right, this is perhaps the most important part. Uh, you need to leave the lesson when you feel like you're sufficiently challenged. So, you know, I'm teaching these lessons, you know, 12 to 15 lessons a month. Normally in traditional lessons, you're getting like a lesson every other week or so. So this is just way too much for you to take in. So, uh, you know, the goal is for you to get some little nugget of something that you can really practice on, really work on. Once you feel like you have that, then you really don't need anything else from me. Uh, you know, go practice. That's where this stuff is, is really gonna happen. And you're not going to get through this lesson and be able to play something really well. You're going to get through this lesson and have the information that you need to practice more effectively. That's really the goal here. So uh, don't feel bad about taking off early. If you feel like halfway through the lesson, you got as much as you can take in at that time, then go practice that thing. And then, you know, come back whenever you've got that thing down or you're bored with it, or you just want to check out the next topic. Uh, don't forget also that uh, you've got the archives too. So if, if you want to like see one little thing just repeat it over and over and over just you know give me hopefully within 24 hours after the lesson this thing will be up in the archive so you can just go back and watch it over and over and over and over and just get that little segment down All right, this lesson specifically today out of the eight sectors of musicianship is one that's focused on inspiration. So this is not one that uh, you're going to necessarily leave with a really specific goal of, of uh, you know, here's the, the little nugget that you're supposed to practice. But uh, hopefully you leave the lesson today feeling, you know, more energized, more encouraged to go out there and practice because that's really where all of the magic happens is in your, your own personal practice time. So the goal of today is uh, to get Get you inspired to go out there and practice. So let's go. Hello and welcome back. You guys are lucky today. You don't have to listen to me quite as much. Uh, today we have yes. a distinguished guest from, uh, you know, from the drumlab.net, uh, the Sacramento's number one drum school here. Uh, he played with Lincoln Brewster. Uh, he's in duplex. Today we have with us the man, Serge Lysik. Thanks so much for being a oh, crap. I'm a little, <laughs> <laughs> I only for, have half for being a head, so everyone. tall. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Hey, hey everyone! Maybe we check Hi, how's it going? <laughs> so weird. Your there camera we just keeps. No, I'm just kidding. There we go. Oh, the man. All right. Gotta fix my hair, everyone. Sorry. So, let's let's try that one again. Uh, so, Hi. Hey. <laughs> thanks for joining <laughs> us. 
Today we have a distinguished guest, Serge Lysik. Here he is. How's What's it going? What's up, everyone? That was awesome. So, so you are uh, you're from the Drum Lab. You're Lincoln Brewster. You're Duplex. You're the Friends Podcast. I am um, Lincoln Brewster. You you are Lincoln <laughs> Brewster. <laughs> Just want to let you guys know, I am he. So, so there you go. If you've never seen Lincoln Brewster before, then <laughs> there he is. Um, so yeah, we we've got all kinds of questions uh, from our our archive students. Of course, live questions coming in from the the live students right now. So we're just gonna jump into it. Uh, try to be respectful of your time. Uh, so question number one: What was your favorite and least favorite part of performing touring with Lincoln Brewster? <laughs> oh <laughs> man, woo! That's a doozy. Uh, favorite part, um, I think, is the the level of like. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of p perks and positives. Uh, it was it's a it's a high, it's kind of a um, I would say like a hi high caliber gig where you're like everything's everything's provided, everything's you, most of the time legit. Unless you're like in a really small town where they just don't have the resources for like you know really really good gear right. or or the venue's not as big or whatever. But when you're playing in that environment, like it, I went from just doing regular you know local gigs to going like you know, flying to gigs and, and great food and always great restaurants, uh, great food and great hotels. That's one of the biggest things that I was surprised about. Like, I don't think we, we stayed at one bad hotel because the, the town just, that was the best that the town <laughs> had. <laughs> but, um, you know, car service, you know, gear's always legit. Um, so when you're touring, who pays for that then? Is that, is that the thing that links? Yeah, you don't pay for, for anything. No food, nothing. I mean... M you go with the, with the crew usually. If you go on uh, on your own, you'll pay for your own stuff. But if the crew is going to, you know, P of Chang's, you go there and you know, bummer. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so um, the the worst part, um, I think it was um, kind of taxing sometimes. Like you, you'd be. The, it was not a worst part, but it's. I think it's part of touring that a lot of people don't realize that the time you spend on stage. Uh, that's like it's not always you know it just you get on, you're playing on stage you get off stage and you're you're just hanging out like I did merch as well um, I was in charge of merch so like yeah um, so I would you know get there set up our set up all of our gear and everything and right. like um, the the Lincoln's crew is pretty small there's not a lot of roadies or anything like that so you have people that will help you there but um, you you set up a lot of this a lot, a lot of the setup you do. Right. And then everyone else does. And then from there, I'd go set up merch and get merch ready. What's merch? Uh, like CDs, T-shirts, um, you know, download cards, um, all kinds of anything that's Lincoln Brewster memor memorabilia, I guess right. you would say. Yeah, sure. Um, a lot of like CDs and stuff like that, DVDs. Right. Um, uh, sweatbands, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> You sell a lot of sweatbands. Backpacks, <laughs> basketballs, <laughs> baseballs, Lincoln Brewster footballs. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, so, so, so that like when you're done with the show, you go and do merch at the end, you pack up merch, you pack up all your gear, you're looking at, sometimes you're out of there at like one o'clock in the morning right. and then you have a flight at five in the morning and you're right. not even at the hotel at one o'clock. When you get to the hotel, you have to count money, you have to tally up all the merch. So you go to sleep like three o'clock in the morning, you wake up at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, you get to sleep in the car or, or in the airplane, but that's not real sleep. Right. That's like... You know, that's right. so that's the only thing that was a drop, the, the negative. But that's unless you're touring with Rihanna, where everything is, you know, you're just you're just there to play drums, right. and there's there's a, a team of people around you. Right. Majority of your gigs that you your touring gigs are going to require you to do more than just play drums. That's why it's so good to be like a, a flexible person, an easygoing person, and um, know know your way around a variety of different environments, not just your instrument. Like. Right. It's good to know a little bit of everything. Right. Mm -hmm. So so you say your your crew is pretty small. What's a small crew? Uh, me, drums, mm -hmm. bass, um, uh, guitar player sometimes, um, keyboard player, front of house guy, and monitors guy. And what was the last one? Monitors. Okay. So we had a, a monitors sound sound man. Right. So the, the, that group of people would all, you'd all travel around together. Yeah. And pretty much do everything. Yeah. Right. Okay. The, this, the, and we'd have helpers there sometimes. Right. But you know, not always. Not and, and like you can't depend on helpers because they don't know how to do everything. So they help right. you, they assist you. Right. But you don't. You, you just. You, that's a. That's a pretty small crew to right. set up a full full setup. Yeah. It, when he did, like I didn't do. He does some. Like he did 
some tours. Like these were just spot dates where I just fly out and fly back, fly out, fly back. Right. Um, when he does real, like, legit tours where he has, you know, uh, when they travel on, on a bus, right. um, they'll bring a crew, like a lighting crew and the setup crew, or there's like a, a little bit more people involved because they, right. on, on those shows, it's a little bit more of an experience, like where they bring their own light, get, light lighting setup, right. they bring their own. Um, you know, we usually just use a light guy, the house light guy. Yeah. So. Cool. All right. Um, next question. What's the best advice you ever received as a musician? Oh, as a musician. Um, one of the biggest ones is, um, it's a, not, I don't know if I've received it from someone, but one of the things that I've always, um, um, like kind of the mentality that I always have, not just in music, but the works of music, is always be, always be a student. Like always be eager to learn, be open to learn, um, have no ego. Like uh, if people give you advice or give you feedback, Take it. Don't don't take it personal. Right. Don't take it. A lot of times, it's in the heat of the moment when you get advice or you get like criticism. That I don't know if you know depends on the person, but I would I would take it like personal. I would get right. all either bummed or or I'd get like you know irritate me or something like that. And so I started I started not analyzing that that advice until later. Right. Because then I could think, okay, depending on who <laughs> came from, what it, how it was said. Sometimes people give you advice. Right. Just to give you, like, because they just like to put put people down, or, or they like to be that guy that, yeah, you know yeah. what, I, 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 I saw you doing that. And it's like they have no idea what right. you're doing. Makes them feel important. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you analyze what they say, you, then you pick and choose what you, what you accept. But the more you can, you know, be po- be um, open to that kind of stuff is, is the more you'll grow. Yeah. And I don't, the, one of my, my kind of mentality is always, you're always, there's always you're always at, there's more more of the the hill to climb or so to speak like there's always somewhere to grow right because if you think you're at the top there's only the only way the only way the only other way is down so i always think like there's always room to grow whether it's business or music right and there's always um you know an area where you can improve so yeah, yeah that's good um next question is what do you think drummers can contribute to music today and in the future that hasn't already been done so this is from probably from one of our our crossover musicians, uh, the drummer who's. Um, um, <clears throat> I don't know what, what, what I think. I, I don't want to say it like I know for sure, but I think everything's been done. <laughs> so <Right>. that's it. <laughs> Sell your right. drums. That's what you can do. <laughs> See you later. That's it for us. <laughs> Get into plumbing. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, I think one of the things that I see a lot, especially uh, in the age of YouTube, um, and in the age of like you know. Um, Kind of like, there's two things. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a two-part answer. Um, in the age of YouTube, everybody wants to impress other people, and w- what it comes and becomes an an athletic or um, uh, just sheer competition. Like right. I just want to impress you on a blaze chops. I want to as fast as. Did you see how good this guy is? How fast he is? And then when when they when you get in that mindset, I think the danger is you get so into that mindset. I know guys that are good friends of mine. They don't listen to anything that's not complicated, fast, right. uh, weird, yep. um, like just crazy. Yep. Everything else sucks. Everything else, ah, you can't do that. But they don't realize that like music is an art form. It's not a competition. It's not a basketball. It's not a football. Right. It's not a weightlifting. It's not a... Uh, you know, X's and O's kind of a thing. It's it's an art form. There's there are so many there's so many like it's not a black and white. There's so many shades of gray. And I think a lot of people nowadays because of YouTube. And I see with students, we'll, we'll do these drum covers, and students will we get so hung up on like, man, my f-. Um, this kid was I just give an example. He was doing a drum cover, and he's like, I don't have I have more toms at home, and my fills are not sounding great. And I told him, <laughs> look, man, when you do, when you focus on those fills. Yeah. When you come back to the groove, yeah. it actually sounds kind of bad, this groove. But if you could do simple fills, you will actually, um, your, your groove will sound great, and the groove is more important. Right. I think the biggest thing that people forget nowadays is groove, like music. Yeah. Uh, and something that I was guilty of, like up until maybe three, three, year, three four years ago, was chasing these things. Was, you know, as an educator, as a, a guy trying to climb the ladder or try to make a name for myself, like I was chasing chops and chasing, you know, right. st- gimmicky things. But I was not following, you know, I was not falling in love with music or groove. Right. And um, and I'm not saying that chops or playing fast or playing complicated is has there's no place for it. There is a place for it, but. Um, 
I think a lot of people don't forget that foundation. Groove and, and fundamentals and simplicity and quality simplicity is uh, overlooked a lot of times and people just want to play fast. Right. And there are guys that can play super fast and they can also groove, but people don't look at that the, the sure. groove part of it and they just look at this this YouTube like, oh my gosh, do you see this guy? Look how crazy he is. Like, right. But those crazy guys, are I, they're only doing YouTube. They're not playing. Right. anywhere else right but they, nobody wants to nobody play with wants them. to play with them there's <laughs> right and so um and so uh, when a lot of those guys that are touring they're not like up to right. i have a buddy of mine who's he's touring he tours all the time he's played with i mean a whole bunch of um um people he's playing with uh father john misty right now mm -hmm. and he was telling me one time that like he He's trying to, uh, I had lunch with him. I have lunch with him whenever I, I, when I can when I'm in SoCal, when he, whenever he's right. around. And he's like, I'm trying to unlearn some of my drummy drumming, drummy drummy stuff. Right. Because there's no place for it. Like, I mean, not no place right. for it, but he's like, I, I, I don't know exactly, the, I don't remember the exact conversation in detail, but what it struck me, like, I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like a guy who's touring, he's, He's played with One Republic. He sat in for the drummer, right. like on a, on a half of a tour, and like he's played with Phil Wickham, like this monster player, like one of the most one of the most inspirational guys for me. Right. And he's like, you know, he's, he's, the things that he said to me were not like, dude, you should just totally practice for fourteen hours a day on like going as fast as you can. Right. What he told me is, like, get inspired by guys that you. If, if you're inspired by a guy, go back and look at what inspires him, and that right. will help you understand how he got there and then help you figure out your way of getting to that sound. Right. Which is like, you can't find that on YouTube. Right. YouTube's just like, blah, 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 you know, like there's yeah. a whole bunch of hubba bubba, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, I think it's the same thing on, on all the instruments. I, one of the, I think one of the best compliments you can get is when a band or, a, you know, a, a leader or whatever just wants you to have there because they don't quite know, like nothing sticks out about what you do. They just know that they everything kind of sounds better when you're there. You know, yeah. you, you want to be an aura. You want to be a presence that just, you know, they, they, I don't know what it is you do, but whatever you're doing, it just, whenever you're here, it sounds better. Whenever you're not here, we don't like yeah. the sound. You, people so. need to just, uh, drummers need to stop thinking about drumming. I started becoming a better drummer when I stopped thinking about drumming. Where I stopped thinking about who's in the audience, how can I impress them? Right. I, I no longer care who's in the audience. I no longer care what I sound like. I care how I think I sound in relationship to the music. Right. And that's made me a better drummer. Like, I was, I'll give you an example, another example. Uh, this is not like, uh, sorry, I don't know, I'm kind of rambling. No, you're but, good, you're good. Um, I, what, me and my, my band were playing a gig um, with my band Duplex, and right. It's kind of like a free form. There's a lot of there's a lot of room for improv and like it's kind of a blues, jazz, funk kind of fusion kind of a thing. And this gig that we played, I invited a bunch of people and like I I for some reason I was like in it I wanted to impress them. Like I right. remember thinking back like I was like, "Man, I was just all I was thinking about was that." And that gig we played and we the gig was I played okay like I played some cool chops and things here and there, but <clears throat> the band and the music was just like, it was not aligning. It was like something was off. Right. So our good friend, Blake, he came up to me. He's like, look, man, when you guys play, when you play the music, you guys kill it. When you try to play for the crowd, or, you, you, or when you're just trying to play the, your instrument, like as, yeah. as cool crazy as cool as you can you, you guys you sound off you just play the music when you guys do that you guys sound great and this i i i i could have taken uh, offense to it but when i when i stepped back i was like dude you were so right i was so playing for the crowd i was not even connected to my band right and um it's just a, another it was another reminder like dude play the music do yeah. not worry about who's in the crowd do not worry about how advanced you sound or how like next level how impressive you are because the music people are there to see the music and and, and get impressed with that you right. might have one percent of people that are there only watching guitar player only watching the keyboard player <laughs> but right. majority um are watching the whole picture the whole the whole the whole thing right mm -hmm. yeah yeah so then taking all that into consideration how do you find your voice then if everything's already been done you're not supposed to be impressing people you're not supposed to just be playing a, a series of licks how do you how do you find what you are um i think <clears throat> man that's a tough question <laughs> I, I it took me some time like I, I i was doing that chase thing where i 
uh, was chasing things, and I didn't, I was I, I got you know I had a guy who told me like I I, sat, I started playing at this church, and this guy CJ, he was the first guy to wake me up and say like, dude, you have all the facility in the world. I mean, not all in the world, but like you have all the chops. Uh, you can play all kinds of things, but where where they sit in the music, it's not. It's like floaty, mm -hmm. and the groove portion of it. That's where that's where the foundation starts. You can have those crazy chops, but if you don't have the groove, it'll never line up. Groove doesn't right. necessarily mean like boosh, catch, boosh. it means how the song grooves, how how the the the, the way the music sounds, the way the, the feel, the rhythm of it, necessarily yeah. the beat you're playing. Right and. Um, and I woke, it woke up, woke me up, like, and I, I went back and started playing these simple things. He said, he said, your time is off. You have bad time. Like, you, it's you're rushing or you're dragging. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I, I was at, the, at that time I was playing and teaching, and I was all kinds right. of cool, in my yeah. opinion. Not cool, like ego, but like I, I was advanced drummer. Like yeah. you, dude, I, what? And so, um, I, I that's when I realized and I started. I went backwards. Um, because I think part of the reason why I was, that was happening was because I was around, you know, Mike and all these other giant drummers right. that have been playing for 20 years. Right. And I was hanging out around them. So what I thought was where I, where they were competing were here. Right. They've already passed all this. I'm not saying they, they were like, they were like at fault here. They, they, they can groove. They, they know how right. to play their groove. Or if they can't, that's not their thing. That's right. not what they're trying to do. But I was chasing this portion of drumming here right. but I forgot this um, just for the camera sake I forgot <laughs> I forgot this oh there we go this OCD-ness just there we go <laughs> so yeah. I forgot this middle middle ground the beginning of the drumming yeah. I had it down but not I didn't I didn't spend enough time with it yeah so I went backwards and I started working on the simplicity and I started looking he told me one time he said don't play music be music hmm. and I was like whoa that's a huge like I never thought of it that way. Like, I've never really connected to music. I just played, I've always thought, like, oh, I play this, I play this fill, or how cool can I make this fill? Right. Not thinking that maybe, I actually feels great. Like, this kid, <laughs> right, this, yeah. this drum cover that I just did, this kid played this one fill, it was like, and it was like so, it, his groove coming out yeah. of that felt so good. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, that's what you need to play. And so. That's so hard to do, though. I mean, that, to just, like, be, ha be content there. You know? Yeah, it's 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 hard because that, that's why you, that's why the the more mature guys are the ones that they're you know playing right. like that or right. they they have the like Steve Jordan he has all the chops in the world have you ever heard, I've heard his solos right. and stuff he has, he can play yeah but he doesn't right he does it only here and there yeah. once in a while when but, he when he when he and then those are like the oh I just saw Steve Jordan play a drum solo <laughs> like yes yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> is anyone else watching this like <laughs> did I just see that by myself. But that, that's something special, though. Like, it's something he's reserving as opposed to, like, just putting it out there, like, that's the first thing that he leads with. You know, exactly. it's like, you, well, then you're not saving it. The rest of your show's going to be crap. Like, exactly. You just use it up in the first five seconds. And, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, and so I think that finding your sound, um, that's something only you can figure out. It's an art form. Like, how, how did Picasso become Picasso? Or how did, right. you know. Right. How do you how do you find your sound or your 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 look? How do you find your fashion sense? I don't know. Right. Go and, and and seek out influences. And I would say my biggest advice, if you want to find your sound, I would go and listen to a variety of things. Listen to an album that you like, uh, like a, let's say a popular artist. That you're kind of like, ah, I don't really like this kind of music. But I would force yourself to s sit through an album and find things that you like in it. Right. I think that's what I've I've started doing. I, I cycle a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll, I'll get whole albums, or I'll Spotify or whatever, um, and I'll listen to a full album, even where I'm like, ah, I want to just fast forward through this song. Right. But what I, I, what, I, what I try to do is I try to like get that whole, like, hey, this is not, like, this is not appealing to me right now, so I don't want to listen to it. Right. I try to ignore that side of me and kind of mentally kind of try to tune into why this song was like this, like yeah. why this song was this way, and what's important here, and what's... What's what's you know beautiful or, or interesting about the song, um, and then I I start to I start to realize I start to find beauty or or, or yeah. you know interesting things about music that I never really listened to, and then that 
I could take that with me subconsciously, consciously, and actually implement it in my playing um, and right. into my you know drumming or whatever, or yeah. just just in general, be like a much more well-rounded musician. Yeah, well, I think that's true with learning any language. Like if you just listen to you know one person in that language and you just learn from them, you're gonna be in a copy of them. You have to listen to people that you wouldn't want to listen to in order to you know, find out what all the different dialects and stuff are out there and all the idiomatic phrases and stuff mm -hmm. to, in order to like decide, oh, well, I want to speak like this and I want to speak like this instead of just having that, that one influence, mm -hmm. you know. And same thing with the vocabulary too, I guess. Like the, um, when you're learning a new language, you don't want to learn all just the, the biggest words in that language. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like most people don't use big words yeah, most of the that's time. Why, that's why I don't so. understand. Like I'm... I, I don't mind like super complicated crazy music but like there's a place and time and place for it and right. it's not always right. right you have normal normal simple conversations yeah. you don't always speak in big words you right. know like and that's why I don't get guys that like I there's there's guys out there that have like this they only want to do complicated things and everything that's not complicated that's ah, just three chords that's right. ah, just four chords that's so that beats so simple right but, like you missing the whole point of that yeah. beat like if you if you played a complicated beat here with this song, you would ruin the song. Yeah, yeah. It, would, it would either not become a hit, or it would not be appealing to your general public, or it would ruin the whole art. Even if it's let's say not a hit, it's just a simple song. It would ruin yeah. the or ruin the aura of it or the vibe because right. you played this. I can play. I can fill all these little gaps with notes. Like, <laughs> right. Exactly. That's not the point, dude. That's, <laughs> but not, that's what houses every... are not made out of just concrete slabs. There's windows. Right. There's gaps. There's doorways. So yeah. You can you know go to a go to a new area or a new you know or leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm done with this song. I'm out of here. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. yeah. Uh, one more question, and then we'll get to the uh, lightning round. Um, Dang, nice. What I know, it's, it's, it goes quick. Uh, so uh, the one more question. Uh, what do pianists do in a band that bugs you the most? Oh, man, everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time we have, everyone. <laughs> we feel the same way about no, you. <laughs> I know. Um, a lot of times, uh, it doesn't really bug me, but I'll give you an example of a scenario that we're – I, I'll share a scenario where it was like, it didn't work, you know. Um, it, we're, we're playing, um, I'm not going to say what, where, who. <laughs> <laughs> and piano player, uh, like if you have a piano player sometimes that's very, uh, like piano players you have, you know, I don't know if it's, I, I play, a l I used to play a little bit of piano when I was a kid, but I don't really understand it that much anymore, but I'm trying to get back into it so I can understand it more and make me a better musician. But I feel like there's, there's, there's a melody and percussion aspect of it. And a lot of times, guy, guys or girls that are, have a lot of skill, they have a lot that they can play. And they forget, and this goes back to our whole topic today, is the simplicity factor. Like right. the, they, so a lot of times the percussion aspect of it, if, if you're a really good piano player, you could over-percussify, is that a word? Sure, yeah, it is now. Over-percussify. <laughs> Add too much percussion to your playing instead of just simplifying and letting, you know, having some percussion because you're like the bridge between melody and, and percussion at the same yeah. time. Having some percussion at the same time, knowing where to let the drummer do that for this part of the song. And right. I'm going to play, I'm going to hold these chords instead of, you know, play these, you know, yep. um, transitional chords or you know, notes and stuff yeah. like that. So, and I think sometimes like, you end up overpowering the music if you're right. really, really good because you're, you have a, you have that to give, and it's not a bad thing, but it's just knowing. Right. Um, I guess it's not a really a piano thing, but I've noticed a scenario like that where I was like, look, I'm already doing like, I'm playing this groove that's kind of a busy groove because the song's kind of like that. Right. So I need you to not play the busy Contrast. groove. And it's, right. it goes, it goes both ways. Like sometimes drummers will play too much and, right. and they should be playing a little bit. Yeah. So um, I, I'll just throw in there too, for pianists especially, that's more difficult to, to recognize when you go from doing a lot of solo piano gigs or practicing just by yourself to playing with a band because you, when you're just by yourself, you are the drummer, you are the bass yeah. player, you are the everything. And then when you get to that, you gotta start taking those pieces out to let other people fill in those gaps because yeah. most drummers don't want a second drummer most bass players don't want a second bass player yeah. <laughs> they just yeah. want to be that one so yeah yeah cool so let's uh, i think you've got a bell there off to the side if you want to put that there on the piano yeah then we'll just uh, we'll run through these questions answer as fast as you can dang. and then uh we'll just ding the bell and i'll i'll hit you with your I'm next question it. i'm gonna dang it um if you could sit down and talk with any musician who would it be steve jordan 
Um, Do I need to stop the bell from ringing? No, that's, okay. that's great. I don't know. Uh, we haven't used the bell before, so this okay. is new. Um, what are the three most important albums to own? Oh, and Vinnie Caliuta. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> this isn't going to work if you go oh, back. Oh, it's new again. <laughs> three most important albums to own. To own? Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, uh, Where the Light Is, I think John Mayer's okay. album. Uh, I don't I just so many. I mean, I can't answer Come on, that. One. We need two more. Two more. Two more. Lightning round. Oh man. Katy Perry and Rihanna. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, what is the most impactful one hundred dollars or less you've spent recently? Uh, go buy. Go 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 get some books. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, any books come to mind? Favorite books? Uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Okay. And anybody else? Um. Doing be Tim Ferriss. Okay. I like his books. All right. Speaking of, I think this one was stolen from one of his podcasts. Uh, what name comes to mind when you think of the word punchable? Punchable? Oh, man. Terrorist. <laughs> Just general. ISIS. <laughs> Everyone who looks like a terrorist. <laughs> Great. That'll play well, real well. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> well, are you a pro terrorist uh, show here? I mean, <laughs> hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any favorite podcasts? Uh, yeah, I like Fighter and the Kid. I like Joe Rogan. I like Tim Ferriss. Um, uh, I like MMA, MMA podcasts. I'm a big MMA junkie, so cool. I like listening to them. But I'm trying to open my, you know, open my, um, podcast. To and, and Friends podcast, I hear. Friends awesome. podcast is by far my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Friends, F-R-E-N-D-Z. A shameless plug. <laughs> if you had to choose one person to be the benevolent dictator of the United States, who would it be? <laughs> oh, man. Katy Perry. <laughs> Wow, I, we, 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 we need to talk. I guess so. Um, what's the number one thing a drummer should avoid doing in a gig? Uh, overplaying. And uh, o- overplaying meaning like loud, o- overdoing anything. Kay. Loud or too much. Right. What was the biggest challenge that you didn't foresee in running the drum lab? Oh, man. Um, managing, man, the, di- the difference between being a coworker, like friend, right. and uh, having to be the boss. So like uh, like walking that tightrope. Some guys are just like I'm the boss and that's it. Some guys are super friendly and I'm kind of in, I'm in between. I guess I'm really friendly with my guys because they're all my friends, mm-hmm. uh, and I try to keep it a team effort. Like not just like hey this is me and this is everyone else. Right. It's more like I'm I'm the quarterback on this team. We're all together. We're right. all trying to go oh, forward. That's good uh, and that's the hardest thing I've I've noticed because it's it's hard to balance that. Um, you know. Yeah. 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 What's the difference between a musical hobbyist and a real musician? Uh, hobbyists usually have money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what's the most important quality as in a uh, music teacher? Uh, being able to figure out what makes a person tick, like what figuring out the key to that person. If you can figure out the person or why they're there or what makes them, you know, what makes them tick, you can teach them anything. You can talk to them in, in, about anything. Cool. Well, we got a ton more questions, but uh, we are out of time. I want to respect your time. Thanks so hey, much for coming can by. I, can I offer something? Um, yeah, if, yeah. You wanna e- if you want to, e- if you want to, if you have questions, if you want to email me, um, sergelysak at gmail dot com. Um, Perfect. I'm more than more than open to answer any questions. If it's something we talk, I can Skype with you. If you really or really need to talk about something, fantastic. Um, and if it's okay with you, then I'll also give you uh, maybe some other questions that we didn't get time for, and maybe we can put that in a uh, blog post. Uh, with links to your sites and stuff. Is yeah, that work? yeah, totally fine with that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Totally. And then where can people find you? Um, I'll be driving down Winding Way, uh, going towards Sacramento. Perfect. Uh, if you want to flag me down over there. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I get on 50. Just if you find me there, 50, going uh, towards Sacramento. Keep <clears> going <throat> with it. What's there down? we go. <clears throat> no, uh, you, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Um, um, I have a... Email sergelysak at gmail.com. That's L Y S A K? L Y S A K. S E R G E L Y S A K at gmail.com. That's like the direct, uh, most direct way to find me. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm around. I'm in Sacramento. The drum I, I, I live on our street. <laughs> right. Well, I shouldn't have said that. Right. I mean, I live on Jar Street. Holy cow. Every time, we, every time we have a public interaction, it always goes to that. With you. What? Uh, <laughs> tell, tell me where uh, I live. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk after. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thanks again, Serge, for uh, being a part hey, today. Thanks for having me. And uh, you know, I love you. Until next time, good luck.